Hi there. So now we'll be discussing some of the option Greeks. So option Greeks are nothing but you know an individual letter dedicated to one of the factors that affect the option prices. So we have already discussed few of the uh, factors which you know affect the option prices. So we have asset price being first of them. We have exercise price being the second one. Volatility is the third one. Time to expiration is one factor that affects, and risk free rate is also one more. So in case if you find difficulty to remember it. Just recall your BSM model, all right. In that you have D1, and that D1 has all these factors that you know really affect your uh, option price. So that is there, and we have we studied most of them in our level one as well. So what we are going to do is we are going to assign each and uh, for for every factor that we see here, we are going to assign a Greek letter to each and every one of them. So say for example, the impact of asset price on the option price. Would be dedicated or would be indicated by delta. All right. So that is something that we'll uh, start. Uh, we'll try and figure out ki how exactly to, you know, inculcate this. So delta is nothing but the change in option price divided by the change in asset price. All right. We have already did a question. We have already done a question on this. So delta is nothing but your hedge ratio as well. And we did a question on a, on hedge ratio while we were trying to figure out the. Arbitrage profit that we can really make, given that the option option is underpriced or overpriced. All right. So delta is nothing but your hedge ratio, and how do you calculate your delta or your hedge ratio? You basically divide the option price, the change in option price, by the change in the asset price. All right. And you also know, also call it the uh, uh, the hedge ratio. All right. Now for delta for the delta for calls would be change in call price divided by change in asset price. All right. Here the option changes to call. All right, and for put it would be nothing but uh, change in put price divided by change in asset price. All right, instead of option we are writing put here. So these two things are quite easy to understand. Uh, one very important thing which I want to highlight here is that deltas for call options are always positive. The reason is very simple. If you see this equation closely, what is happening here is, say for example, mm, currently we are. Uh, you know the asset price is uh, say for example 10 and the call price is 2 all right the call price is 2 and the asset increase the asset price increases to 14 all right the asset price increases to 14 so you have purchased a call option already right, purchased a call option in that case uh, the likelihood for the call option to be in the money increases all right that idea is pretty simple that the asset price has gone up all right, and when do you make money in a call option? When asset prices go up, and as the asset prices go up, the likelihood becomes more. And since the likelihood of making money for the call option increases, automatically the price of the call option should also increase. Say, for example, it increases to five. Say, for example, it increases to five. So, what you really need to understand here is that uh, if the asset price is increasing, the uh, the option price is also going to increase and you can see uh, that there is a change in the asset price by 4 and there is a change in the call price by 3. So 3 upon 4 is something that you have that is 0.75. So you will always have a positive delta. All right. Uh, if you go the other way around, if the asset price is decreasing, you will see a decrease in the uh, option price as well. And when both these, both these things are decreasing, you will have negative number All right. on either side or in the numerator as well as in the denominator. So that would cancel it out and you'd all again have a positive delta. So that is something that you need to understand for call deltas where change in call price upon change in asset price would always be positive. All right, would always be positive. And therefore, you know, the chart that you can see here for the delta is somewhat in the positive zone only. All right, just it starts from zero, around zero, and then it increases in the positive direction. All right, there cannot be a negative delta for call options. Likewise, uh, things you know changes for things change for put options. So when we are discussing put options, we'll see here that put options are always negative. Call it put options are always negative. The reason is simple because uh, put option works uh, or have or put options have an inverse relationship with your asset price. Again, uh, if say for example, currently the asset price is 10 and the value of a put option is 2. All right. If the asset price increases to 14, say for example, the likelihood for your put option to be in the money decreases or the likelihood for your put option to make money 
decreases because the asset price has gone up. Whereas in the case of put option, you make money when asset prices come down. All right. So the price of the put option will go down. So there is a positive change here, but there is a negative change here. All right. So in the numerator you have a negative change, but in the denominator you have a positive change. So all you have a negative change. And for any scenario that you take, the delta for put option would be negative. All right. So what I'll do here is I'll take one more example. I think it will make things clearer for you. I'll take an example for call delta and I'll prove that why call delta would always be positive. Say for example, S we have it as 10. X we have it as 10 again. All right. Right now the call premium that is there is somewhere 2 rupees. All right. Call premium that we have is 2 rupees. Now that S has increased to 14. All right. That S has increased to 14. So definitely you are more in the money now all right here you were not making any profit any loss you were at break even the excise price was 10 the stock price was also 10 but now since it has risen to 14 and the excise price is still 10 obviously you would not change the excise price since we're talking about the same option you are making four rupees more all right you're making four rupees more and since you're making four rupees more automatically the call price will also increase all right will also increase uh, by how much is a separate case altogether that we'll be discussing later on but definitely the call price will also increase because the value for the call person or the value for the person owning the call option has increased so automatically the price will also increase likewise if you do it for a put option all right what will really happen is say for example in the same situation you had a put option which was priced at two rupees and the stock price had risen all right so there was an increase of four rupees in the stock price so you would have seen a decline in the value of the put option why because uh, put uh, there is no money getting made here for the put option rather he would the chances for him to make money have gone down and the chances for his option to expire and the money has again gone down all right it might end up out of out of the money so that is something that you need to understand that the relationship between the stock price or the asset price with the option affects the value of delta so since Call option and asset price have a positive relationship. That is why we have positive deltas. Since uh, asset and put op since as asset prices and put options have uh, inverse relationship. That is why we have negative deltas for put options. All right. So that is uh, that is there. Uh, uh, again, with uh, dividend yield, how we can really calculate uh, deltas or how we can really calculate the hedge ratios is pretty simple. Change in C upon change in S is nothing but your uh, e to the power minus dividend yield into t into n into d1 uh, n into d, rather n bracket uh, a function of d1 all right likewise for put option what we're going to do is we are going to have a negative sign here and rather than using d1 we'll be using minus d1 this uh, is you know backed by your bsm model again and what we studied there so these are the two formulas that we have uh, what you need to understand here is you might be given the deltas all right, in the question uh, and you might be given the change in the stock price and you might be asked to calculate the change in the option price so what i meant here is you might be given this value entire value which is your delta all right uh, you must be given say for example change in the stock price and you would be asked to calculate the change in c likewise for this case as well you must have been given this uh, change in stock price is something that they would give you and you they would ask you to calculate the change in p all right or they could you know do the other way around as well they could give you change in p and the delta and they could simply ask you to calculate the change in s all right that is also something they can do so uh, these are the basics of delta we'll delve deeper into delta and understand how exactly delta moves all right uh, how delta moves when we are at the money how delta moves when we are out of the money how delta moves when we are uh, in the money so all scenarios will be discussing and we'll see the moment of delta for both the call and put options and later on we'll be moving ahead with our other option Greeks that we have. Thank you.